tell you about a young man named Jelani. Jelani is 16 years old right now. A couple of years ago, he was kicked out of his school. Here in California, that means that you go to an alternative school where you do your time until the year is over. Jelani was very bright, but he was the bane of the existence of teachers because he knew just how to use his wit to get all the class attention, disrupt things so that the poor teacher couldn't teach anybody else in the room. Jelani was approached by a young college girl named Tylesha. And Tylesha said, Jelani, why don't you come over this summer? We've got this program over at University of the Pacific. Starts at 7 in the morning, goes till 10 at night. We know there's nothing you'd rather do than go to school all summer. And Jelani said, you've got to be kidding. She said, no, because this program is not for those A-plus students. It's for non-traditional leaders, just like you. Jelani was so touched that Tylesha saw the potential in him that he went, a little skeptical at first, until that first day they read a poem, a poem about a rose growing through concrete, and he was hooked. Jelani is back in high school now, and he's thinking about a future where he hadn't before. Now this story is just about one young man, and really young, one young woman. And what a difference a person can make in someone else's life. But it's also a story about how a university and its people can impact the people in a community. So I'd like to share with you my personal passion about a university and how it can transform a community. I came here just a few, year, a few years ago and recognized that Stockton was a community in need. I couldn't make any claims to know what Stockton needed, but I did have a strong personal value that when I arrived, I realized it was shared across this university by faculty, staff, and students alike, which is the idea of regional stewardship that a university is tied to its place. And as such, it has a responsibility to make a difference in that place. Now, yes, there are certainly some business benefits to this. A thriving, vibrant city will attract the best faculty and the best students. And a city would really like a vibrant, thriving university because our graduates will help produce the workforce for the city. So we have a natural positive symbiosis. But it goes deeper than that. We are part of place. A university, unlike many institutions in the country and in the world, is extraordinarily stable. Often that's said in a derogatory way because universities are not known for change all that much. But part of that stability is our sense of place. Look at University of the Pacific and this absolutely beautiful campus that we have here in Stockton since 1924. We've been here, actually, we've been in the state for 160 years. So we are an old institution, but we came here proactively in 1924, built these buildings, built this campus, and became part of the future of Stockton. And so we have a responsibility to also be part of Stockton's future. So we are not an ivory tower, in spite of the fact that we do have that ivory tower right out in front. So when I came, all of us said, how can we make a difference? We do many outreach activities from our School of Pharmacy to our wonderful Bennard School of Education. Our faculty, our students are out there. But we held a series of forums the first year that I came. There were six different forums when we invited community experts 
to sit on a panel and talk to us, who are in the audience just listening. And we asked them to tell us what could the university to help do to help regarding health care, regarding the economy, regarding the environment, helping our diverse ethnic groups, addressing arts and culture, improving education. These were powerful forums. They were attended by hundreds and hundreds of people. And at the end, we got recommendations of what the university could do to help the region. So first we asked and listened, and then second, we looked at our mission. We looked at the recommendations and we said, what do we have capacity for? And what is tied to our mission so that we can make the largest difference in Stockton and beyond? And as a result of that, we've taken a number of initiatives that are just beginning, but they're building a wonderful momentum and excitement. So the first one, is a commitment to education. We recognize that the future of Stockton hinges on young men like Jelani completing high school and being ready for a college future, or perhaps not college, but be ready for job training, to see a future and a path to that future. And so we have introduced a number of academies under the umbrella of the Tomorrow Project. Now these academies are summer or after school or weekend programs that allow students to supplement, to learn more in addition to what they're learning in the classroom. And they're offered in partnership, not just closely with the K through 12 schools, but also with community partners. So let me tell you about a few. You just heard a little bit about the summer Leadership Academy, started by Tylesha Hooker, a student run for students and by students. They're a tremendous group. They bring about 15 of our local youth each summer here, the very high-risk kids, and inspire them to complete high school. We've started a program called Reaching for the Stars. You know, there's a lot of light on my face, so I can't see Jose, but I hope you're here. Because Jose Hernandez, in many ways, inspired this. He heard what we were doing at the university, and he feels passionately about helping young people be prepared for their dreams, especially in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math. And so we've adopted a program that is modeled very similar to one in Texas, which is called Tech Prep. I actually spent five years in Texas, and my son's best friend participated in this program, and so I saw firsthand how powerful it was. So we have brought that here to University of the Pacific, and young people come, junior high and early high school, and they study math all summer. Can you believe it? It's fun math. They see how math is applied, they learn advanced concepts, and they continue to build on what they learned the prior year, and they're ready for the next year, if not farther advanced. Now, in Texas, that program has been replicated across universities. Typically, it's housed in universities in 17 different cities, and it has impacted 28,000 youth in Texas. 75% of the kids who have participated have been minorities. Of the kids who participated in the tech prep program, it was called there, 99.9% .9 graduated from high school, 99% went on to college, and of those who went to college, 85% graduated. Over half in science, technology, engineering, and math fields. What a powerful program to help young people achieve their dreams. Another program that we brought we borrowed from Venezuela, El, St El Sistema. Perhaps you're familiar with this. It's a program since 1975 that has impacted the youth in a powerful way across Venezuela, encouraging them to succeed in school by learning how to play a musical instrument. And so this program, the idea came up out of our 
committee of community and university folks who saw the power for that. And so our Stockton Symphony, our United Way, our Community Foundation of Stockton, and our Conservatory of Music and the Bennard School of Education are partnering together to teach young people in Stockton how to play the violin. Now, when I talk about this to young people, I, say, I point out that really the secret behind this is to teach them math, but they don't realize that. Because it turns out that learning how to play a musical instrument develops the same part of your brain that is effective in math. And so here in Stockton, our young kids were first learning at the beginning of the year on cereal boxes. It helped them develop their neck muscles, I guess, for holding the violins. Well, when we brought out their violins to them, one young girl was so excited, she reached over and kissed it. She sees a powerful future in front of her. In addition to these Tomorrow Project Academies, which we look forward to growing, expanding, and multiplying across the Central Valley, we've also formed a Beyond Our Gates Community Council because we know we need to be around the table and partnering with people in the community on what we can do the most to help the needs of the community. This community council, I convene but it's made up of civic leaders, religious leaders, education leaders, nonprofit and business leaders. And we've been meeting now for about a year. And interestingly enough, we left it open to what would the group like to address. And education ended up being the theme for this group. We're not quite, we're, we're looking at just where an education to focus. We brought in Dr. Molina Morgan, who was just with us yesterday and today, who's part of Colin Powell's, uh, General Colin Powell's Grad Nation as part of America's Promise. We're seeing great potential by getting all of our community members together and focused on what is our goal, how do we measure our achievement, and how can we make steady progress toward that goal. So, Jelani is one young man and one story. But we truly believe that by implementing these programs that involve the deeply committed people at University of the Pacific with members across the Stockton and San Joaquin community, if we put our heads and our hearts together, we can truly make a difference because a university is not an isolated institution. We are part of our community. And while in many ways today's TEDx and the TED programs are focused on global issues, it all gets about caring. It all is about people making a difference in other people's lives in the world around them. And so I am truly honored to be president of a university of people that care so deeply about others and are committed to making a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you.